Welcome to this video for the Singer C430 computerized sewing machine. Before we get started sewing with the machine, we're going to take a few minutes to go over some of the principal parts of the machine so that you'll be familiar with them when we get started. Before we begin, we're going to plug in the power cord and then plug the other end into your power source. Plug in your foot control and then turn the machine on. Over here, you'll find your hand wheel. This is how you manually raise and lower your needle. You want to make sure you always turn the hand wheel toward you. This is your carry handle. This is how you open the top lid of your machine where all your stitches are displayed. This is your bobbin winding spindle, your bobbin winding tension disc, a couple of different thread guides, which we'll talk about when we thread the machine, and your spool pin and spool cap. Here we have some operation buttons. This one corresponds to this group of stitches on my lid. This one corresponds to this group of stitches on my lid. And we'll talk about those later in the video. This is your editing button. These are operation buttons for various functions, which again we'll use shortly. Your LCD screen. This is your speed control. This is your reverse button. This button actually has two functions. It can be used as a needle up down button, so you can have the needle stop up or down on demand. You can also use this button as a sew slow button. And this feature is so that you can have your machine sew slowly on demand. This is a thread cutting button. And this is your start stop button. And it can be used to sew without the use of the foot control if you desire. Back here you'll find your presser foot lifter. And this is for raising and lowering the presser foot. It has two positions when you raise it. The basic position, but then you can also raise it one more time with your finger to get extra thick layers underneath the presser foot. This is your buttonhole lever, which we'll use later on when we make a buttonhole. This is your built-in needle threader. This is your bobbin cover release button and your bobbin cover. This is your removable storage compartment, which slides off the end of the machine and it exposes the free arm, which is nice when you want to do smaller areas that are kind of hard to reach, like pants, hems, sleeve cuffs, and so on. Here is your drop feed lever. You will push that to the left to lower the feed teeth for when you want to sew on buttons or do free motion sewing. When you want to re-engage your feed teeth, push it to the right and turn your hand wheel one full revolution to re-engage them for normal sewing. You can replace the removable storage compartment by just sliding it onto the end of the free arm like this. Your accessories are stored here in the front, and here you'll find your buttonhole foot and all the additional accessories like screwdrivers, little brushes for cleaning, your extra presser feet, extra bobbins and needles. Everything stores completely handy right here at your fingertips anytime you're ready for them. There's a full instruction manual for your machine, which can be found online. You can view or download and print your machine's manual from the Singer website at singer.com slash manuals. To wind the bobbin, we first need to retrieve the bobbin from the bobbin holder. Press the bobbin cover release button, remove the cover, and retrieve the bobbin. This is a Singer Class 15 transparent bobbin, so when you want to buy more bobbins for your machine, make sure that they're Singer Class 15 bobbins. Place your thread spool on the spool pin and set it in place with your spool cap. Take the thread end under this thread guide, around this thread guide here, around this thread guide at the back, just behind the bobbin winding tension disc. Make sure that your thread slips completely under the disc. Maybe you want to hold it with your left hand as you pull with your right hand just to make sure that it's in there. Now place the end of the thread through one of these holes in your bobbin, hold the thread end, and place the bobbin 
down onto the bobbin winding spindle. Make sure you press it all the way down and then press to the right. Hold this thread end as you step on the foot controller to begin winding the bobbin. You can stop to trim the thread tail and then resume winding. The bobbin will stop automatically when it's full. Push to the left, then lift the bobbin off the bobbin winding spindle and cut the thread. To insert the bobbin, place the bobbin in the bobbin holder. To make sure you have it in properly, as you pull the thread, check that it turns counterclockwise. Now with a finger held lightly on the bobbin, bring the thread tail into this first guide, right here, and then lay it in this second little groove right here, and then replace the bobbin cover. We'll draw up the bobbin thread after we thread the needle. Now we're ready to thread the top of the machine. You want to make sure your presser foot lifter is raised and your needle is in its highest position and you can do that by turning the hand wheel toward you. The top of the machine probably looks like this from having wound the bobbin, so just take this thread out of the bobbin winding tension disc. And now we've got our thread end in our left hand. We're going to place it underneath this first thread guide and then we're going to bring it around, like so, down around the U-turn, up around this next U-turn, bring it back down to the needle threader. Bring your thread around this thread guide right here, then lower your presser foot, bring your thread around this hook on the needle threader assembly, and push the needle threader all the way down as you bring your thread into the holder. Release with your left hand as you let go of the thread with your right hand and you'll see a little loop form. You can raise the presser foot lifter, pull the loop through, then holding this thread with your left hand lightly, turn the hand wheel toward you and pull slightly to draw up the bobbin thread. You'll see the loop come up, bring the bobbin thread through and then put both threads to the back and you're ready to start sewing. So let's now test our stitch to make sure we threaded the machine correctly. Place your fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and our machine is already set on straight stitch when we turn the machine on, so we can just begin. Then step on your foot control to begin sewing. When you come to the end of your seam, if you want to sew in reverse, Right up here is a reverse button, so you can just press and hold it for as many stitches as you want to sew in reverse. And at the end of your seam, you can use your thread cutting button, which will raise your needle and cut both the top and bobbin thread for you. Stitch looks good on top, looks good on the back. So we threaded perfectly. If for some reason when you sew, the top looks great, but the back side looks thready and loopy. It's actually an indication that you threaded the top of the machine incorrectly. Your machine comes with a variety of presser feet, and from time to time you'll want to change them depending on the sewing technique you're doing. To change a presser foot, raise the presser foot lifter and put your finger behind on this lever behind the presser foot holder, press to release, and take your new presser foot, line it up underneath the presser foot holder, lower it until the foot snaps into place. When you select a stitch, the optimum thread tension is pre-selected for you. Press this button to view the tension setting. If you choose to adjust the setting for your project, just press the buttons below the screen. A higher number means a tighter needle thread tension, and a lower number means a looser needle thread tension. The default value will be displayed with a darker colored box behind the number, so you'll always know what default setting is. Let's take a look at how to use our speed control. You can set it from slow to fast because sometimes you want to sew slowly and sometimes you want to sew faster. 
when you put your fabric under the presser foot to sew, if you step on the foot control without lowering the presser foot lifter, you're going to hear this beep sound, and that's an indication that you need to lower your presser foot lifter. So now you're ready to begin. So here we go at about a medium speed, but I can set this to sew slower. And as I move it to the right, it goes faster and faster and faster until it goes full speed. Anywhere you want it, wherever you're comfortable. When you come to the end, just press your scissor button, which is your thread cutter button. It cuts both your top and bottom thread at the same time. Now another thing you can do with your speed control is as you're sewing along, and you're at a normal speed, but you maybe just want to slow down a little bit, you can press your, what looks like a little turtle there, that's your sew slow button, and that will continue sewing slowly until you touch the button again and then it will resume speed. So you have actually a couple different ways that you can control the speed of your sewing. At the top of your machine is a display of all of your stitches that are built in your machine. So let's explore how to use some of these stitches. You'll notice there's two major groups. This group here that looks like a straight stitch and zigzag with a little button by it. These are your, your, your continuous stitches or you, and utility stitches and your buttonholes. This button is for your programmable stitches, which we're going to do in another segment. So let's start up here with this first group. I want to sew a really popular stitch, which is a zigzag. And if I look here, I can see zigzag is stitch number eight. So I'm going to look for this icon down here at the front of my machine and press it. And then I'm going to use my scroll buttons and scroll until I see number eight in my window. And press the button underneath that, and I'm ready to sew a zigzag. So let's see how that looks. Place my fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot to start sewing, and step on the foot control. So there's my zigzag stitch. Now I can go on to my LCD screen and I can make adjustments to this stitch if I'd like to. Sometimes with a zigzag stitch, you want to shorten your stitch length for applique. You might want to change the width of the stitch. So what you'll see here is this is the current setting for the stitch length and the current setting for the width. Underneath the stitch length, there's a minus and a plus, which means I can shorten or lengthen the stitch length as I wish. For the width, I see 5.0, but I can increase stitch width or decrease stitch width as I want but the default settings always show with the black behind the number. So if I wanted to make my stitch narrower, I would bring this down. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see as I brought the value down on the screen, the stitch was narrower. Let's put it back to normal and let's try shortening it a little bit. Here you can see where I made the stitches shorter, meaning closer together, than they were on the original. So just to make the adjustments as you need for your project. One really neat thing on this machine is that there's a tie-off button. This is a backup button, and when I press that, I move back one layer on my screen, and I can notice here a tie-off button. So there may be times when you sew stitches where you want to tie off the stitch at the beginning and end so that the thread tail doesn't unravel. So press the tie off button and we'll sew that zigzag one more time. It sews a few tie off stitches and then resumes this sewing the stitch. And when I'm finished sewing the stitch, I can press the reverse button 
and it will tie off the stitch for me so that my threads won't unravel. There are creative options available to you with many of your stitches in group one. If you take a closer look up here on your lid, you'll see this kind of triangle shaped looking icon under many of your stitches. And that actually means mirror image, which is indicated over here on the legend in the lower corner of your lid. To show you how this works, we're gonna use slant over edge stitch number 20, and we're gonna sew four different kinds of mirror imaging that is available for that particular stitch. I'm going to use slant over edge stitch number 20. So I'm going to look for this icon and find stitch number 20, the slant over edge, then come down and choose with my scroll buttons, stitch number 20 by pressing this button underneath number 20. And then you, I can see that triangle shaped icon right here on my screen. So I'm going to do that to select it. And then this icon here gives me my choices for mirror image. So let's sew the first row, just as is. Use my thread cutter button to trim my threads. And here is our first row with the slant over edge. Now, if I come back to my screen and press the button underneath this icon one more time, I'm gonna mirror image the stitch from left to right. Let's see what that looks like. Here we've moved from left to right. Now if I come back to my screen, if I press it one more time, it's going to invert it from top to bottom. And if I press it one more time, it'll be from top to bottom and left to right. So there you have mirror imaging. You'll notice another icon under some of your stitches that looks like times two. And if you look down here at your legend, you'll see what that means is elongation. So it will let you take something like in this case, the feather stitch that looks like this normally, and you can elongate times two to look like this. So let's see how to do that. To show you how to use elongation in this group of stitches, let's choose that stitch, the feather stitch. It's number 18. Press it, and then use my scrolling buttons until I see number 18 on my screen, and then select the feather stitch by pressing the button just below it. And when I look at this icon here, I can see times one. So that means the feather stitch in just its normal way. So let's sew that out first and see what that looks like. So here's our feather stitch, as is. Now if we go to the 
LCD screen and the buttons just below, I'm going to press this button and then come over here to this icon and press times two. And now I'm going to sew the feather stitch again, but this time it will be elongated. And there's our elongated feather stitch. For more information about using elongation or mirror imaging on this first group of stitches, refer to your instruction manual online. There's another group of stitches on your stitch panel. In this group here where it says ABC and flower, these are your programmable stitches. This is where your lettering is and many of your decorative stitches. And these can be programmed together to make a stitch sequence that you want. Just as in the first group of stitches, we do have mirror imaging as a possibility, but we also have elongation, but this time it's a little different. You'll see that this goes up to times five. And if you look here at your legend, you'll see that you can take a stitch such as a scallop stitch and elongate five different ways, like on my sample here. So your basic scallop stitch, when you choose it here, this is how it looks when you just select it and sew. But there's a difference between the programmable stitches and the first group of stitches that we worked with when it comes to elongation. Where in the first group of stitches, we could go to times two, here we can go to times five. But the difference between stitch length and elongation is that if you use stitch length, you'll get the same number of stitches stretched out over a larger area but when I choose elongation, more stitches are added, filling in the area that normally would be left if I just had used stitch length. Let's try stitch elongation with one of our stitches. So I'm gonna select the stitch from the second group. I'm gonna come down here to this ABC flower button, press it, and I'm just gonna use that popular scallop stitch, which is the first one in my group. So I'm gonna to touch it to select, and now I'll press E, which is edit, which is gonna give me some options. This is where I see my elongation along with mirror imaging and twin needle, but I'm going to press this and come over here to where elongation is. And I see it's on times one already, so let's sew that stitch as is. It's also, it's recommending presser foot B, which I've already put on the machine. The satin stitch foot is great for these denser stitches because there's a groove on the underside that lets the dense stitches pass freely underneath. Now let's go back up to E for edit, press our icon for elongation, and underneath this icon, let's go to times three. And let's see what that looks like. So here's times one, times three. We'll come back up here to the screen, touch E for edit, back to our elongation selection to times five. And one more row and let's see what that one looks like. And there we go. If you'd like to find out more about how to use mirror imaging or stitch elongation for your programmable stitches, just refer to your online instruction manual. 
Another thing you can do with this group of stitches, because they're programmable stitches, is mix them together in different combinations to make original stitch sequences. There's stitches, there's letters, there's five different fonts, and you can mix them together to make any kind of stitch sequence you want. So let's see how to do that. We had just finished sewing the scallop stitch, and we don't need the scallop stitch anymore, so we want to erase that from the screen. So to do that, we're going to press this E, which means edit. And here, this icon is an eraser. So we'll press the button underneath that to delete the scallop stitch from the screen. I want to sew this stitch combination that looks like the word Anna with a flower on each end. So let's program that into the machine. I'm going to start by scrolling through my decorative stitches until I see the flower. Here it is, number 17. I'm going to press that and I can see the flower is in the window and it's still recommending that I leave my satin stitch foot or presser foot B on the machine. Now I'm going to select my letters. So I'll come to my ABC flower button on the front of the machine, press it, and as I each time I press it, I'm going to select a different font or decorative stitches, but we want the fonts, and I'm going to use this first font group, and I want the letter A, so I'm going to press the button under A to select it for the first letter in the word Anna. And then to get to the N, I'm going to scroll. And here it is. So I press it, press it again. And then I'm going to scroll back to come back to the letter A, press it. And then use my ABC flower button or my ABC decorative stitch button and press it again until I see the grouping of decorative stitches in the window and then scroll once again until I see that flower and select it. So there's my stitch sequence that I want to sew. And if I was to sew right now, it would repeat that continuously, but I want to sew it one time and have the machine stop automatically. So I'm going to continue scrolling until I see the stop and actually program the stop in there. So here's our stitch sequence, and naturally the machine connects in between letters as it sews. You would simply take a small scissor and just clip those connecting threads. There may be times when you're programming a stitch sequence where you realize that maybe you entered a stitch or a letter that you didn't really want or you want to change it. Um, that's really easy to do with your edit function. So in this case where I had the flower and the name and a flower, maybe I want to change this flower to a heart instead of a flower. So you'll go to edit and then use your cursor buttons here to scroll over to where the one you want to change is highlighted. Use your eraser to delete it. Then come back over here to your stitch selecting button and scroll through until you get to the decorative stitches and then scroll through the decorative stitches until you see the heart. Now you've made your change and you're ready to sew your new entry. On the top lid of your machine you'll see displayed quite a few different styles of buttonholes. There's bar tack buttonholes, keyhole buttonholes, stretch buttonholes, depending on the fabric you're sewing or your project. To show you how to sew a buttonhole, we're going to select buttonhole number 101, which is a basic bar tack buttonhole. I'm going to select my utility category button and then scroll through until I come to the buttonhole area. And I'm going to select with this button number 101. And what I'll see here is that it's also recommending presser foot F, which is my buttonhole foot. I've retrieved this from my removable storage compartment and we're going to place that on the machine. 
To determine where to sew a buttonhole on your fabric, place your button on the fabric where you want the buttonhole to be. You're going to draw a line at the bottom of the buttonhole with a removable fabric pen or pencil. And then draw a line, use a ruler if it helps you. Draw a line in the center part of the buttonhole, just so you know where to place it under the foot. So the machine will know how large of a buttonhole to make for your button. We're going to actually place the button in the buttonhole foot. So you slide the back of it open, set your button in place, and then close the slider on the button. We're now ready to place the buttonhole foot on the machine. We're going to place the buttonhole foot on the machine, but first we need to release the foot that's on it right now and put the buttonhole foot on. Place your thread through the hole in the buttonhole foot and then to put your fabric into correct position underneath the foot for sewing, the sideways line should line up with these two red lines on each side of the opening of the foot and the vertical line should line up with this center marking. With your thread under the foot and your foot in place, pull the buttonhole lever down and step on the foot control to start sewing. When the buttonhole is finished, it will tie off. You can cut your threads with your thread cutter button. You'll raise the needle, trim both threads, and here's your finished buttonhole. When your buttonhole is finished, you can trim your excess thread, remove any of the fabric markings. This was a chalk pencil, so we just rub the excess away. And to cut the buttonhole open, you might want to try placing a pin at the end. We'll use the seam ripper from the accessory storage in your removable storage compartment, and the pin will keep us from accidentally cutting through that last bar tack. You can remove the pin, and here is our perfectly sized buttonhole for our button. As a basic guideline, needles should be changed about every eight hours of sewing. And from time to time you'll need to change your sewing machine's needle depending on sewing technique or the type of thread you want to use. Regular point needles are for non-stretch fabrics like cotton, wool, silk, and so on. Ballpoint needles are for stretch fabrics like t-shirt, sweatshirt, and fleece. And heavy duty needles are for heavyweight fabrics like denim and canvas. There are even leather needles used for sewing leather or vinyl. To change a needle, you might first want to remove the presser foot just to give you a clearer view of the area. You might also want to place a small piece of paper underneath the needle area in case you drop the needle. You're going to retrieve this screwdriver which is located in your removable storage compartment and place it into the needle clamp screw here at the side. Turn toward you to loosen so the needle will drop out and then replace your new needle by pushing it in to the needle clamp and then tightening the needle clamp screw. Remove the paper and replace your presser foot.